the ravaging of Africa has been enriching Europe and North America for more than 500 years. First, European empires imposed slavery and colonialism on the continent. After 1945, the United States took over as the dominant neo-colonial power. Through the Pentagon and the CIA, the U.S. government has fueled 14 wars in Africa with arms transfers and military training. It is American invasion, but the U.S. role is everything. The U.S. has used the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund to systematically demolish African economies and health and education sectors. Par les stratégies de la Banque mondiale, les pauvres seront toujours pauvres, les riches seront toujours riches. This military and economic war enables the looting of Africa's resources by Western multinational corporations. Shell is into the politics of Nigeria, you know. One might say we have our independence, but economically, we are still being colonized. Washington's genocidal imperial strategy has killed more than 26 million Africans, but failed to suppress popular resistance. We have refused to die. We are living for Africa. No matter what they do, no matter what power they have. You are listening to The Ravaging of Africa, a four-part documentary series about the destructive impact of U.S. imperialism on the continent. I'm Asad Ismi. I'm Kristen Schwartz. Voices and sounds in this series were recorded at the 2007 World Social Forum held in Nairobi, Kenya. This is Corporate Plunder, the third episode in our series. For the next half hour, we focus on the looting of Africa's abundant resources by multinational corporations. We hear from the oil fields of the Niger Delta, from Kenya's coast, and from the Tax Justice Network. Stay tuned. A major objective of U.S. imperialism and World Bank IMF policy in Africa is to ensure that Western multinational corporations dominate the continent's economies and are able to loot them and send the proceeds to the West. As heard in the Congo, 85 multinational companies are plundering the enormous mineral wealth of the richest country in Africa. This has been made possible by a civil war arranged by the U.S. As a Congolese official said, we just watch our country's resources drain away with no benefit to the Congolese people. This is the case for all of Africa. South Africa is the continent's largest gold producer, and most of its gold and diamond wealth is controlled by the UK-based Anglo-American Corporation, which operates in 60 countries. Ghana is Africa's second largest gold producer. Multinationals own most of the country's gold, the main source of its wealth, from which Ghanaians get little benefit. Foreign mining companies can repatriate up to 95% of their profits into external accounts and pay no income tax or duties. In Sierra Leone, the diamond multinational De Beers, as well as American and Canadian mining companies, financed a 10-year civil war that killed 75,000 people. There has been a long-standing alliance between the U.S. and multinational corporations, with Washington overthrowing progressive governments all over the South that challenged the company's control over their country's resources. This has happened in the Congo, Ghana, Somalia, Iran, Guatemala, Chile, and Nicaragua, amongst other states. Nigeria is Africa's leading oil producer, the eighth largest in the world and the fifth biggest exporter to the U.S. Nigerian oil is so important to Washington that President Bush has declared it a strategic asset, which means that he has authorized U.S. military intervention to ensure this oil flow in case it is threatened. For this reason, U.S. warships patrol the Gulf of Guinea from where Nigerian oil is transported. Most of Nigeria's oil wealth is controlled by the multinational's Royal Dutch Shell, based in the Netherlands and Britain, and ExxonMobil and Chevron, both U.S.-based. Shell and ExxonMobil declared record profits for 2006. In Nigeria, the oil company's policies have fueled enormous official corruption that ensures that after they grab the lion's share of the oil wealth, most of the rest is taken by 1% of the population, while 65% of Nigerians live in poverty. Shell, the biggest oil producer in Nigeria, was partly responsible for the killing of nine activists, including Ken Sarawiwa, by a military dictatorship in 1995. The activists opposed the company's operations due to the environmental and social devastation they cause. The Niger Delta, where most of the oil is situated, has been ecologically destroyed by Western oil multinationals. The region is the largest producer of greenhouse gases in the world. The people of the Delta remain amongst the poorest in Nigeria, 
while Shell has extracted more than $30 billion in oil revenue since the 1960s. The 7 million Delta residents are mostly subsistence farmers and fishermen women whose rivers and fields have been ruined by oil spills that average 300 a year. Many villages in the Delta have no electricity, clean drinking water, and paid employment, and most have no schools, medical clinics, or social services. The murder of Saraviva and the refusal of the oil companies and the government to address his concerns has led to the rise of a far more militant indigenous protest movement led by the Movement for the Emancipation of the Niger Delta, or MEND. Since January 2006, MEND has been engaged in a major insurgency, kidnapping foreign oil workers, blowing up pipelines, and killing Nigerian soldiers. This has dramatically reduced Nigerian oil production by 28% and that of Shell by a crippling 50%. It has also caused world oil prices to rise. MEND opposes the environmental devastation of the Delta caused by oil companies and wants the region's oil money to go to its people. The group is fighting for total control of oil wealth by the people of the Delta and demands reparations from the companies for their pollution. MEND has warned the oil multinationals to, in its words, leave our land while you can or die in it. The group has made clear that its aim is to totally destroy the capacity of the Nigerian government to export oil. Afyania Lort is president of Women Light Foundation, a non-governmental organization that works in the Niger Delta. She is from Bayelsa State in the Delta and belongs to the Fangbe community. Women Light Foundation is linked to Friends of the Earth International. They are creating a war within Nigeria, these oil companies, using our own people to kill our own people, whether they are militants or they are military, they are so German. We are all Nigerians, and it's a sad thing. I don't see a reason why Nigerian military that's supposed to be defending our people will go there, get killed by their own people, and the people get killed by them. Because the people have to protect themselves. How long will this continue? I know that there is one group that is meant. Those groups are genuine. They know what they want. They have a plan. They want a government to look into the situation in the Niger Delta. Communities should take charge of their natural resources, be it from any uh, ethnic nationality in Nigeria. Communities should take be in charge of it, whether it's gold, whether it's marble, solid or liquid mineral, communities should be in charge of it. An expansion of the insurgency could stop all oil production in the Delta. I pray that it stops oil production. And one, if it stops, I'd be happy because Shell, if I were Shell, I would stop exploring for more oil take a stop and try to at least make amends for the mistakes, the errors they've made. The oil companies are responsible for enormous environmental and social destruction in Nigeria. Whenever there is rain, the whole rain is black. If you use this uh, normal zinc to roof your house in less than three months, it will be leaking because of acid rain. When we harvest uh, food from these lands and we eat it, the food tastes like gasoline, the fish tastes like gasoline. Almost everybody suffers from asthma in the Delta. My community has the right to breathe good air. My community has the right to have good pure land which they can farm on. My community has the right to clean water. Shell does little to remedy the harmful effects of frequent oil spills. Oruma, it's a community in Bayelsa State. The spill was so bad that it got into their creek, so there was no water, no food, and uh, Shell did not even bring any relief material for them. Children were asking for water. There are lots of respiratory diseases, and the whole community there smells crude. If you are there for like 10 minutes, you start choking. So I wonder how people there are surviving, you know. Another example I've been to is Goy, where the whole creek is burnt down. You can't even see one single fish.